Hello student let's uh, start with the next topic okay last time you have see the two types of the uh, lr parsing in that we have seen the lr0 parser and the slr1 parser so we are discuss discussing about the different techniques in the bottom of parsing and now today also we will going to see the remaining two uh, types of the parsing under the lr parsing and under the main category bottom of parsing so today we are going to discuss about the clr1 parsing and the lar1 parsing so already we have discussed bottom of parsing uh, consist of uh, different techniques where in the bottom of parsing we start from the bottom and we try to reach to the starting symbol in order to parse the particular string so this bottom of parsing we are using to check whether the particular string syntax is correct or not and we and uh, we are checking it through the different techniques already before this we have checked it through the top down parsing also and from some previous lectures we are discussing about the bottom up parsing techniques so already uh, under this sip reduce parsing we have discussed operator precedence parsing also we have discussed and from last lecture we are discussing about the table driven parsers so under the table driven parsers which are being also referred as the lr parsers already we have discussed lr0 parsers and the slr1 parsers now uh, if you see the clr1 parser uh, and the bottom of, under the bottom of parsing clr1 is the third technique so just like in the top down parsing under the top down parsing we have discussed about the predictive parser which require the different data structure like it require the parsing table stack and some functions to parse the string here in case of the lr uh, bottom up parsing also we require the parsing table stack and some functions to parse the particular string and to check the syntax of the particular string or the sentence so if you see the all the parsers under the bottom up parsing Uh, specifically all the parsers under the lr parsing of the bottom of parsing like lr0 slr1 clr lr so the process of parsing is same and only change is nothing but the uh, change in the construction of the parsing table so before this also we have discussed uh, the how there is a change in the construction of parsing table of lr0 parser as compared with the slr1 parser so we have already discussed in case of the lr0 parsers uh, we put the reduction entries in the entire row but in case of the slr1 parser we just put the reduction entry uh, into the follow up left hand side so uh, also we have discussed for the purpose of uh, lr0 parsing and slr1 parsing which is consist of the simple lr parser we required the canonical collection of lr0 atoms but the techniques today we are going to discuss like clr parser and the lr parser for this we require the canonical collection of lr1 items okay that is the only difference uh, if you compare these two techniques with the these two techniques and also the way of constructing the parsing table is also the different okay so see, let's see the next so uh, just like uh, the previous two parsers we have discussed lr0 and the slr1 here also we are going to need the two same functions the closure functions and the go to function for the clr1 parser so clr uh, the c here the c stands for the canonical and lr already you know the full form of the lr left to right scanning with the rightmost uh, derivation in the reverse that is the meaning of lr l stands for the left to right scanning r stands for the rightmost derivation in the reverse okay this already we have discussed now uh, the same kind of terms we required in order to do the clr parsing also we required the uh, augmented grammar so what is the augmented grammar that also last time we have seen if there is a grammar g with the starting symbol s then g dash is considered as augmented grammar for the original grammar g and this augmented grammar g this augmented grammar g dash is nothing but the with some new starting symbol s dash and production h dash derive the starting symbol s and why we need the augmented grammar that also last time i told you 
the purpose of this new starting production is to indicate to the parser when it should stop parsing and when the announcement of accept, accept, acceptance of the input can be done. So uh, the augmented grammar helps to the parser to, uh, to indicate or to announce whether the string or the uh, particular uh, sentence can be accepted or not. Now to announce that final outcome, we utilize the augmented grammar. Okay, so here I have mentioned the augmented grammar purpose is for the announcing purpose of acceptance of particular input. Whatever the input we are checking for the syntax analysis, whether that input is syntactically correct or not, that can be announced with the help of the augmented grammar. Augmented grammar helps to the uh, this particular LR parsers and specifically in that CLR one parser to announce whether the particular string can be accepted or not. So if this is a original grammar, H derives A and A derives a small a, a and small b. So for this particular grammar, augmented grammar like this can be generated. Now, how it is generated that already last time I told you, we have to introduce the new uh, non-terminal H dash and H mm -hmm. dash uh, and we have to uh, derive the H dash to the S means we have to derive the H dash to the starting symbol of this particular original grammar and rest of the things we write as it is. Okay. So the main purpose of having the augmented grammar is nothing but to uh, give idea to the parser when the parser should stop parsing and announce the acceptance of input string. Okay. So the kind of uh, different data structure required for the LR parsing that also last time we have discussed the same kind of data structure required for the CLR one parser also like we require the input buffer, we require the LR parsing algorithm, LR parsing table, stack, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So here to the parsing table, we just refer the CLR one parsing table okay now why we require these data structure like for example input buffer we required because it contain the particular input string that has to be parsed and it is always followed by the dollar symbol dollar indicate the end of particular input string also we require the stack so stack used to contain the sequence of grammar symbol okay last time i told you when we are parsing the string the stack contain the grammar symbol and also, we require the parsing table, which is the two-dimensional table, and it contains the two main parts, like one is the action part, another is a go-to part. So while we parsing the string, the parsing table help us to take the decision when the reduction should be done. Now, uh, if you see the different steps to perform the parsing using the CLR one, the same steps you can observe in here that we have discussed regarding the previous CLR parsings like adding the augmented grammar, then generation of canonical collection of LR1 atoms. Now, one thing different here is what? We have to utilize the canonical collection of LR1 atoms and how to generate the canonical collection of LR1 atoms that we will see. Then we have to construct the CLR1 parsing table and last steps are as it is parsing the input string and generation of the parse string. Okay. Now, uh, so first step is nothing but the adding the augmented grammar. So here you already know how to create the augmented grammar. Suppose we have given the string a, a, b, b, dollar, and we have given the grammar these. And so this grammar can be easily augmented by taking the, or starting with, by introducing new non-terminal H dash, deriving the starting symbol of this grammar S and write the rest of the part as it is. So this is nothing but the adding the augmented grammar. Then Next is nothing but the generation of canonical collection of LR1 atoms. Now, already we know, we have discussed in the previous lecture, what is the LR0 atoms? Okay, so LR0 atom of the grammar is nothing but uh, presence of the dot at some position in the right hand side of that grammar that is called as a LR, uh, the grammar with the LR0 atoms. Now, what is the meaning of that uh, dot that already uh, last time I told you? Now this, if the dot is present at this stage, at the starting of this uh, whole string, it indicate parser has not seen anything. Parser has not seen anything in the sense the parser still has to start the parsing the string or reading the string. Okay. A dot B C indicate parser has seen the string A only. A B dot C indicate the parser has string the A B and A B C dot indicate the parser has seen whole string. ABC and now as a parser has seen whole string ABC now parser is ready to reduce the ABC to S. So why there is a requirement of this LR0 items here I have mentioned because main decision that we have to take 
during the bottom of parsing is nothing but when the reduction should be performed means when the replacing the right hand side with the left hand side so we can do the reduction to the left hand side only when the parser has seen the entire string from the right hand side and that indication whether parser has not whether parser has seen entire string from the right hand side that indication is given with the help of the lr0 item so from this we can see lr0 item tells whether it is the right time to do the reduction or not so that is regarding the lr0 items last time also i told you but now what is what exactly is the lr1 items because in case of clr1 parser we have to utilize the we have to we have to utilize uh, canonical collection of canonical collection of lr1 items okay canonical collection of lr1 items so first we understand what exactly mean by the lr1 items okay so generally lr1 item is nothing but like this it being described in this way lr1 items equal to lr0 item plus look ahead okay now what do you mean by the look ahead that also number of times i told you look ahead nothing but the kind of uh, symbol or the here look ahead, here meaning of the look ahead we have to take it as a look ahead symbol okay the which indicates uh, which particular next symbol to be parsed that indication is given with the help of the look ahead symbol okay now here what is the meaning of look ahead symbol we will discuss suppose we have given the production now lr1 item is nothing but what lr0 items plus look ahead now we already know the what exactly mean by the lr0 item okay now we have to just understand what exactly mean by the look ahead in this case so before this we have seen the look ahead pointer so look ahead pointer is used to point to the next symbol of the input string that has to be parsed by the parser that is the main utilization of look ahead pointer now here uh, look ahead symbol is also uh, uh, doing the same thing okay look ahead pointer point to the look ahead symbols now how to generate this look ahead symbol in case of the uh, lr1 items that we have to uh, focus here suppose this is the production given and so s derives dot aa now this is nothing but the lr0 items because you know the lr0 item is nothing but what the dot present at some position on the right hand side of grammar that particular grammar is considered as a grammar with the lr0 items so this is the lr0 items okay but if you just write this grammar like this or the production rule of particular grammar like this s derives dot aa comma a by b then this in this production rule of the grammar this a by b or this a and b is called as a look ahead what this particular whole part is nothing but our lr0 items if along with the lr0 items look ahead is there then that particular grammar is considered as a grammar with the lr1 items okay so in this production rule you can easily see here we have the this has a lr0 because dot is present at some position on the right hand side and along with that by do, by giving the comma here we have added the two symbols a and b so this a and b is now considered as a look ahead symbols this a and b is considered as what look ahead symbols now question is what how to generate this look ahead symbol that we are going to discuss next okay so you have to just understand what exactly mean by the lr1 item so lr1 items is nothing but what lr0 items plus look ahead understood like this so in case of clr1 parsing table or in case of the clr1 parsing these look ahead symbols are generally utilized to place the reduction entries in the parsing table okay so main utilization of this look ahead symbol in case of clr1 parsing is nothing but what we are going to put the reduction entries only under this look ahead symbols because if you see the lr0 parser we are putting the reduction entries in the whole rows in entire row in case of slr1 we are making the reduction entry in the fall of left hand side but here in case of clr1 parser the look, we are going to utilize the look ahead symbol and this look ahead symbol will give idea to the parser to place the reduction entries below the look ahead symbols okay not below the not under the entire row not uh, in the follow up left hand side 
but lucoid symbols give idea to the clr1 parser to place the reduction entries only below the lucoid symbol so that is nothing but the utilization of lucoid symbols in case of clr1 parser now question is how to generate these lucoid symbols okay now let's see we have the given grammar like this s derives a a a derives a a and b now for this augmented grammar can be generated like this we know okay this is the augmented grammar with the lr0 items because dot is present at some position on the <coughs> left hand side oh, sorry right hand side now for this particular augmented grammar now we have to see how this can be converted into the grammar with the lr1 items now this is the grammar this is the grammar with the lr0 items okay this is the grammar with the lr0 items now we have to convert it the grammar with the lr1 items now how to do this let's see okay if you just take now we have to take this production one by one if you see the first production s dash derives dot s okay now this is the augmented production you can see this is what augmented production because our original grammar is like this but we have added the extra production that is the reason it is called as augmented production so this is the augmented production okay and this is the augmented pro production with the lr0 items okay we have to make it lr1 items so for initial production uh, you have to keep in uh, one thing in mind by default and it is mandatory for all the kind of grammars for initial production we always we have to always take dollar as a lucoid symbol whatever the grammar is given okay for that initial production we have to take dollar as a lucoid symbol by default okay so that is the reason here we are getting the first step of the grammar with the lr1 atoms that is s dash deriving the dot s comma and as i said for the first production you have to take the dollar as a lucoid symbol second step is like this s derives dot a a comma dollar now how to get the second step okay let's see to get the second step here we have to see which is the symbol after the dot now we are going to get our second step from the first step we have to get our first, second step from the first step okay to get the second step we have to see which is the symbol after the dot now in case of first step which is the symbol after the dot it is the s means it is a non terminal s so it is a non terminal s so we have to add the production related with the s okay so here <laughs> you can see the symbol after the dot is s so we have to add the production related with s with dot at the beginning means simply we are applying here the closure operation so here we have to add the production related with s with the dot at the beginning and then find the first stop remaining next thing we have to do is what we have to find the first stop remaining okay so we do the first step we add the production related with the s with the dot at the beginning now what is the production related with the s you can see the production related with the s is nothing but what this s derives aa so s derives dot aa and what is the next step we have to perform next step we have to perform is nothing but you have to take the first stop what is the remaining part so you have to take the first stop what is the remaining part of this first step so then find the first so here i have mentioned first add the production related with s with the dot at the beginning and then take the first stop remaining so what is the first stop remaining here first stop remaining is nothing but first stop dollar so first stop dollar is always the dollar which is then considered as a lucoid symbol for the second production so in this way we have get we are getting here the second production okay so only two steps you have to apply what is the first step we have to add the production related with the that particular uh, non terminal symbol okay which is having the dot on its left hand side and second step you have to take the first stop remaining part okay so let's see the next okay now here you can see how to get the third step now this is already we have done now how to get this third and this fourth step now you know to get the third step add the production related with now we have to see the second this second production we have to see so you have to add the production related with this non terminal a with the dot at the beginning okay so the production related with the a is nothing but what a a and b so we add a derives dot a a okay 
and take the first stop remaining means you have to take the first stop remaining means you have to take the first stop a dollar so if you see our original grammar is like this s derives a a and a derives a a or b so what is the first stop a first stop a is a and b and first stop so we have to take the first stop a that is a and b so we just add a and b okay what a and b and first stop dollar is what dollar itself understood so you have to just focus on this starting non terminal symbol as here you are getting a and b so first stop a dollar is nothing but first stop a so first stop a is a and b so that is the reason here we have written the third step dot a a comma ab okay and dot b comma ab because sec okay production related with the a is nothing but what a a and b okay so here 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 it should be the small b okay so in this way in this way we have got the third step and the fourth step also so in this way we have got the lr1 items you can easily see so these are nothing but our final uh, grammar with the lr1 items this is called the lr1 items because it is consist of the lr0 plus lookaid symbols okay it is a small b okay so this is nothing but our i0 state in the canonical collection of lr1 atoms so we get the i0 state which is the canonical collection of all lr1 atoms starting with the s dash gives the dot s so here we have taken the first production and apply the closure operation so this is our first step now rest of the things is as it is that we have done in the canonical collection of lr0 atoms okay so next here we have to apply the go to operation closure and go to closure and go to as it is like the previous so now we apply the go to on the s so for this first production if you apply the go to on the s we will get the i1 state and when you apply the go to you have to move the dot to the dot from left hand side of that symbol to the right hand side so here you get the i1 as a final item okay s dot derive s dot and you have to carry this lookaid as it is okay so this is our first final item but this is the final item we have got because of the augmented grammar and this will help us to announce the acceptance of particular string okay second step is s dot s derives dot a a dollar so we will apply the go to operation again here so go to operation on non terminal a we will get the i2 state s dash derives a dot a and carry the lookaid as it is so here we have to apply the closure operation because dot is present on the left hand side of a so we will add the production related with the a dot a a with the dollar as a lookaid and a derives dot b with the dollar as a lookaid okay so this is finished closure operation finished then again next we have to apply the go to on the terminal a here go to on the terminal a we get the i3 state if you apply the go to on the terminal a you have to move the dot from uh, left of this terminal a to the right so we will get the a derives a dot a and now look at for this is a and b so dot is present on left hand side of non terminal so you have to add the production related with the a these are nothing but a derives dot a comma ab and a derives dot b comma ab okay then last production you have to add the go to, uh, apply the go to operation on the terminal b so here you will get the i4 state and a derives the b dot and here we will get the our next final item that's a derives b dot and with the look at ab now again i2 state we have to simplify now on the i2 state we apply the uh, go to on the terminal a and you will get the i5 state now this is like our next final item a a dot and the dollar as a look ahead then again we apply go to on the terminal a if you apply the go to on the terminal a you will get the uh, you will get the next uh, state that is i6 a derives dot a a then again here we get the uh, what we can say uh, dot before the here we get the dot start at the left hand side of this non terminal so again you have to add the closure operation you have to add the production related to a 
these are the dot a a derived dot a dollar a derived dot b dollar okay then here again uh, go to on the terminal b here we the again next final item we'll get that is the i7 which is nothing but the a derives b dot and dollar next i3 we have to simplify now if you try to simplify the i3 you have to move the for the first production we have to move the dot from this left of this non terminal a to the right and here that's why the go to on the term non terminal a you will get the next final item that is a i8 for second production in the i3 you have to apply the uh, go to op, uh, you have to apply the go to operation so if you apply the go to operation here we will get the this kind of situation a okay and a by b and i add the production related with a that will be the like dot a a a by b and here b dot a by b means same state we are going to get that is the reason here you can see the go to on the terminal a is being shown to the that i3 itself okay then we have to apply the go to for the third production on the terminal b so if you apply the go to here we will get this step only and that is the reason arrow is shown to the fourth step okay next we have to simplify the i6 again so if you simplify the i6 again and if you apply go to on the uh, non terminal a we will get the i9 state here okay a a dot a derives a a dot and this is next final item we will get now if you apply the go to on the terminal a we are going to get the same state that's why the arrow is shown to the i6 itself so in this way you have to get the canonical collection of lr1 atoms now if you compare this canonical collection of lr1 atoms with the canonical collection of lr0 atoms here you can see the states are increased and the main reason behind the states are increased nothing but what uh, because of the look ahead symbols the states are increased because if you see the some states if you see the states like i3 and the i6 here both of the states are similar but lr0 item of this both of the state is similar but look aheads are different if you see the i4 and uh, i7 here also the <coughs> lr0 items are same means this part is same but look aheads are different if you see the i8 and the i9 also lr0 part is same but the look aheads are different because of this some extra steps are increase here okay then now next we have to construct the parsing table for clr1 okay this is the next important step to construct the parsing table for clr1 items okay so for these all the things are similar just like the lr0 and slr1 only the change is where to place the reduction entries that is the different thing okay now if you see the i from the i0 on i0 you are going to the i1 on non terminal s that is the reason below the <laughs> this s this is your action part okay and this is your go to part so you know whenever there is a movement from one state to the another state on the non non terminal you have to add the entry in the go to part so here i0 on non terminal a is going to the i1 so here below the s we add the one then i0 on again i0 on the non terminal a going to the i2 so i0 on the non terminal a going to the i2 that's why below the a okay below the a we add the 2 okay this is actually below the a 2 okay then okay this is actually the a must be here okay so below the a there is a 2 then i0 on the terminal a is going to the i3 so when there is a one there is a movement go to operation from one state to another state on terminal so we have to add the entry into the table as a shift so i0 on the terminal a is going to the i3 so here we are the s3 below the a then i0 on the terminal is going to the i4 that's why below the b we are the s4 okay then i1 is the final item but this is the final atom generated because of the augmented grammar and that is the reason in the i1 state and below the dollar we write the accept mark because dollar as a look ahead indicate the string is the string is being terminated 
okay so this will help us to uh, announce this will help to the parser to announce whether string can be accepted or not okay then next i2 i2 on the non terminal a is going to the next another state that is i5 that is the reason i2 on uh, non terminal is going to the i5 that's why here we have written the 5 then i2 on the terminal a is going to the i6 that's why s6 here i2 on the terminal i2 on the terminal b is going to the i7 that's why s7 is here then i3 i3 on the non uh, i3 on the non terminal a is going to i8 that's why 8 is here i3 on the terminal a is uh, represent is pointing to the i3 itself that's why s3 is there i3 on the terminal is going to the i4 that's why s4 is below the b then i4 is the final item okay i4 is the final item as i said in case of clr on parser we have to put the reduction entries below the look ahead symbols so for the i4 now you know the i4 is a deriving the b dot now as you know we have the, our original grammar like this s derives a a then a derives small a capital a and again a derives small b so we have to number this production this has a one this has a two and this has a three so i4 is having the production a derives b dot so this is the production number three so we have to make the entry as a r3 but where you have to make the entry below the look at symbol so our look at symbols are a and b so we'll make the entry below the a as r3 entry below the b as r3 then state i5 is also the final state final item so it is a production number first that's why and now look at is a dollar so below the dollar we add the r1 next i6 so i6 on the uh, non terminal a is going to i9 so that's why below the a we write the 9 so i6 on the terminal a is i to the i6 itself that's why s6 here i6 on the terminal b is going to the i7 that's why the s7 there okay the next step is the i7 so i7 is also the final item so it derives b dots this is our production number 3 so and uh, look at the dollar so below the dollar only we will write the r3 in the i7 state then i8 is also the final item so but i8 is the production number 2 and its uh, look at are a and b so in case of the i8 we write the reduction entries below the a and reduction entry below the b then last one is the i9 which is also the final item which is our production number 2 in that item so and look at is a dollar so below the dollar only we will add the r2 okay so in this way you have to generate the parsing table for clr1 parser okay now so if you see the reduction entries how we have made the reduction entries the same point i have mentioned here so the placement of shift uh, movement in the clr1 parsing table is same as the slr1 parsing table only difference is in the placement of the reduction movements only difference in the placement of the reduction entries. So as already I told you, I4 contain the final item. That's is the reason under the I4 and below the only the look at symbols, we have made the entries of reduction entries. In case of the I5 also, we have made the reduction entries below the look at symbol dollar only. Okay, here, here you can see. In case of the I7 also, we have made the reduction entries below the uh, uh, below the dollar only because look at for the i7 and the production is and the production in the i7 is a dollar similar is thing we have done for the i8 also we have made the reduction entries below the a and b okay because the look at for the i8 are a and b <laughs> then and for the i9 also we have made the reduction reduction entry below the dollar because for the i9 the production is aa and its looker is the dollar so in this way uh, you have to construct the parsing table and also you have to generate the canonical collection of lr1 items for the clr1 parser okay and the step fourth and fifth that is the parsing the input string and generation of parse tree these are the same in case of that you have to apply the same procedure that we have <coughs> done 
while we have solved the one example during the lr0 parsing that procedure is as it is same okay then uh, la lr1 okay so our fourth uh, parsing under the bottom of parsing and under the bottom of parsing table driven parser that is the lr parsers under that our fourth technique is related with the la lr1 parser so this is the last kind of parser in a, a table driven parser and under the lr parsing that is the la lr1 parser so steps for the la lr1 parsers are similar like previous clr1 parser like adding the augmented grammar then generation of canonical collection of lr1 atoms constructing the la lr1 parsing table okay so this step is only different constructing the la lr1 parsing table that only we are going to discuss rest of the things like parsing the input string generation of parse tree these are all the same okay so as compared to the clr1 parsers step 1 and 2 are same only difference in the step number 3 where procedure to construct the LLR on parsing table is different. Okay. And step number four and five also similar to the CLR on parser. Okay. So LLR uh, referred to the, it's a long form is the look ahead LR. Okay. And to construct the LLR on parsing, LLR one parsing table, we have to utilize the canonical collection of LR one items, the same that we have utilized. Uh, in the canonical uh, as a in the CLR1 parser. Okay. So in the LLR1 parsing, the LR1 items which have the same productions but different locates are combined to form the single set of items. Now, if you see the canonical collection of LR, LA, uh, canonical collection of LR1 items, now in that canonical collection, there are the different states which are having the same, uh, which are having the same LR0 items, but different look aids. Okay. So while constructing the parsing table for LLR1 atoms, uh, for constructing the parsing table for LLR1 parser, uh, we have to uh, think about that particular different states which are having the different look aid, but the same LR0 items. Okay. So in LLR parsing, uh, the rest of the things is different only how to construct the parsing table that is the different that we are going to see. Okay. Now the point that I'm telling you the in this particular canonical collection of LR, LR, LR uh, canonical collection of uh, LR on items. Uh, there are the certain states like state I3 and the I6. Where is the state I3 and I6? I3 and the state I6. Now if you see these two states their initial part is same, means these LR0 items are same. Okay. Only the second part is different, means look aids are different. Okay. In case of the state I3 and I6. If you see the I4 and the I7, I4 and the I7, in case of this also, the initial part, the LR0 items are same, only the look aids are different. Then if you see the I8 and I9, I8 and the I9, in case of this also, the initial part, the LR0 items is same. Okay. But the second part that is the lookouts are different. Okay. So these states having the same LR0 items, but different lookouts. Okay. So what we have to do in order to get the parsing table for LALR1. Okay. Now to get the parsing table for LALR1 we have to merge these states, which states, these states we have to merge. So how we are going to merge these states? Okay. So I3, I6 will be merged as a I3, 6. Okay. I3, I6 will be merged as a I3, 6. I4, I7 will be merged as a I4, 7. Okay. Then I8, I9 will be merged as a I8, 9. Okay. Now, how to do that? Let's see it. Okay. So you have to merge the state that already I to by merging this state, we are actually going to reduce the size of CLR one parsing table that we'll see. Okay. And how to perform the merging? You have to perform the merging like three, six will I three, I six will be merged to I three, six. I four, I seven will be merged to the I four, seven and I eight, I nine will be merged as a I will be merged as a I eight, nine. Okay. Now, let's see how to do this. 
Now, the same table that we have seen in case of the CLR1 parsing that we have modified here. Now, how we have modified here? Let's see. Wherever you will see the 3 and 6, wherever you will see the 3 and 6, that we have to write as a 3, 6. Okay, everywhere you can see, wherever in the CLR1 parsing table, wherever we are having the 3 and 6, there we have to write the 3, 6. Okay, here, 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 okay, here, everywhere, wherever there is a 3 or wherever there is a 6, that we have to merge as a 3, 6. Okay, so everywhere we have done the same thing. Okay, now wherever there is a 4 and 7, wherever there is a separate 4 and 7, that we have to merge as a combined 4, 7. So here we have done 4, 7, 4, 7, 4, 7, okay, 4, 7. So while doing this, you have to uh, uh, compare it with the parsing table of CLR1. They, you can easily understand 4, 7, like this. Okay. Now, whenever you have the separate I8 and the I9 that you have to combine it as a I, that you have to combine is a 8, 9. So here, 8, 9, 8, 9. Okay, 8, 9, 8, 9, like you have done. Okay. So that is the first thing you have to do in table, wherever you see the uh, three and six separately, you have to write there three, six. Okay. In the states, in the action part, as well as in the go to part. So that is only we have done. Then what is the next thing we have to do? Now, next thing we have to do is the merging. Now we have to see this is the three, six state and this is the three, six state. Now, if you see these two state, both are the similar. So we'll delete this state and we'll just keep this state only. So we'll merge this state within this state. Okay. Then four, seven, see where is the four, seven you have? Here is the four, seven you have, and here is the four, seven. So we'll merge this state into the, this state. Okay. And we'll shift this R3 here. Okay. And this will be get reduced. This will be get deleted. Then next I89. So here is I89 and here is I10. Now we'll shift this R2 here and we'll delete this. Okay. So here you can see we have deleted the three states. One, two, three. Okay. Now after this, after doing this, what final parsing table you are, we will get like this. You can see. Okay. The rest of the uh, content we have merged and from that we have get the final LALR1 parsing table. So if you see the number of empty positions are increased in case of CLR1 parser and in case of the LALR1 parser also, that is the reason the CLR, CLR1 parser and the LALR1 parser are, uh, here you can see uh, how to get the, or how to generate the LALR1 parsing table uh, from the CLR1, okay. So we have to just perform some modification in the CLR1 parsing table that already I told you. So by comparing the CLR1 parsing table, once, I, once again, I'm telling you. So this is our parsing table for CLR1. So you have to just make the changes wherever there is a three and six, you have to make there as a three, six. So here is a three. So here we have write three, six. Okay. Then here is a six. So here you have write three, six. Here is a seven. There you have write the four, seven. Here is a three, three, seven, six. You have to write. Here is a four, four, seven. Here is a three. So three, six. Here is a four. So four, seven, you have to write. Then next, here is a six. Here, you are, here is a six, here you have to write the three six. Here is a six, here you have to write the three six again. Here is a seven, here you have to write the four seven. Again, here is a seven, here you have to mention the four seven. Here is a eight, here you have to write the I eight nine. Here is a nine, here also you have to write the I eight nine. Okay. And here is a nine, so here you have to write the eight nine. Here is a eight, here you have to write the eight nine. Okay. So in this way, after doing this, you have to merge the state and how to merge already I told you 
this 3 6 and this 3 6 will be merged this will be get cancel this 4 7 and this 4 7 will be get merged this will get cancel r3 will get shipped here and this out of this the second r8 9 will be deleted and this r2 will be shipped here and finally you will get the parsing table like this and using this parsing table any kind of string we can parse with the help of the given grammar so parsing the string example is as it is that we have seen in the lr0 parser only the uh, thing that will be changed is nothing but the construction of the parsing table so if you see in the uh, if you try to compare uh, the previous uh, two parsers like lr0 and the slr1 with the CLR1, the LLR1. So difference in both uh, in uh, these two categories, nothing but for the LR0 and SLR1, we require the canonical collection of LR0 atoms. And for the CLR1 and the LLR1, we require the canonical collection of LR1 atoms. So how to get that, that already I shown you. Okay, so that's it from this lecture. The remaining part will be continued in the next lecture. Okay, thank you all of you.